Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 18th episode of Kentucky Go Digital Live. This is the second episode of our February series, Digital Tools for Support Staff. I'm Elaine Abanatha, Technology Integration Specialist with McCracken County Schools. Today, I'm joined with our Kentucky Go Digital Live team. Of course, we have Heather Worrell and Courtney DeRossett. We're missing Brooke Whitlow today as she's prepping for us very important spelling bee, and we're very proud of her for doing that. Hello, ladies. How is everybody today? Hello, doing great. Excited to hear what the show is going to provide today. Awesome. Happy Tuesday. I'm super pumped up for this show. Uh, digital tools at the district level. Love it. Can't wait to hear about these bus drivers. <laughs> yes. Awesome. So we're joined today, as they were speaking of, with two amazing leaders here in my district, McCracken County Schools, Mr. Dan Pope. He's the director of district-wide programs, and Sarah Jane Hedges, food service director. We are both very glad to have you. We are all glad to have you. So during today's live show, we've got Courtney, who's teaming up with Heather to take questions from YouTube live chat. And make sure you drop in there to introduce yourself, as well as letting us know what county you're from. If you do not have the ability to chat with us live, make sure that you push that login button that's in the top right-hand corner. And also that if you're while you're there, go ahead and push subscribe, which this will let you have some ability to make sure that you don't miss out on what's going on with Kentucky Go Digital in the YouTube channel. So check those out. So Courtney and Heather are also going to be watching for questions and feedback on Twitter. Just make sure that you if you if that's a better way for you to to put in some questions. So but we're going to start off with Mr. Dan Pope, who is currently the director of district wide programs at McCracken, which I said earlier. But I want to let you know that he's taught middle school for 18 years, <laughs> elementary school for four years, and has served as an elementary school principal for 12 years. Welcome, Mr. Pope. I'm glad to have you. <laughs> I'm, I'm very glad to be here. Thank you very much. So I want to uh, also let everybody know that I just finished a very amazing book that has been written by Mr. Pope. It is called, If You Are Comfortable, You Are Not Growing. And um, this book has a very special quote that, um, that I actually found very vital with what he was working on in, in, his, in this area that we were working on with the transportation department. But that was the that if you need the right tools that are vital for the job. And that was something that your dad had taught you. Can you let everybody know about that piece of your book? Most definitely. My, my father was a, um, a machinist and a tool and die maker, and he uh, never wanted to have a repairman or someone come to our house. And so we did everything as I was growing up. Uh, it's, it's harder to do that now, but uh, many times he would say, if I just had the right tools, I could do this. And uh, he would prove that to us. And that has stuck with me from, for uh, my uh, teaching career and my job as a principal, because if I provided my staff with the right tools, they could get the job done. They could do what they needed to do. It, it might take a little training for sure, but um, we need those tools. So and most of us know I, that us know. ability to use these digital tools has become the right tool to help us to work smarter, not harder. But uh, we've also, there's several quotes in this book that I make them up. But I wanted to let you go let ahead and tell everybody what, what these tools you've been incorporating and how they have become the right tool for, for this, um, for the transportation department. And so I'll let you take it away, Mr. Pope, and, and show us what, what you have started and what is going on. We have several things that we are using, and I'm going to... Um, share here. This all started with, uh, real briefly, we had um, a summer retreat that Elaine was involved in and Mr. Harper wanted us to uh, do star ratings and something with Fred Factor. And uh, Elaine quickly got me connected through, um, uh, through Google Forms. And from that, uh, the director of transportation that I work with um, 
we had some discussions and she was very intrigued from those summer meetings about using uh, Google uh, to streamline what we're doing here in uh, transportation. And so there's where our journey began. Um, Elaine then um, became a uh, almost a, a member of our staff and has been and has not left uh, very many months where she's not been here at least four or five days each month. Um, so that began with uh, an idea that Elaine gave us about using Google Classroom. Once she sat down with Teresa and I and started talking about what Teresa wanted to do, uh, that quickly turned into um, Elaine's brainchild of using Google Classroom. And uh, immediately, I love the idea. Um, we uh, created a transportation classroom in, in uh, Google. So we have, uh, if you will, 86 students, which are bus drivers and monitors that are part of our classroom. Um, and uh, of course it, it took training. Um, and I want to say I was very proud of the uh, uh, transportation staff because um, there was very little pushback. Once they saw what they were gonna be able to do, uh, there, there was uh, automatic buy-in. I'll, I'll move on to the, the things that we're using it for. One, um, uh, timesheets and um, those help us with the accountability of the days that they're working and in the event that there is the need for overtime um, uh, Elaine and Denise Smith who is uh, our uh, assistant here in the transportation office they have worked very well together um, and using uh, Google Sheets, they created a form that is part of uh, our Google Classroom. And what you're seeing now is a sample of the February timesheet. Um, these add everything up, which removes uh, a lot of the um, possibility of error. Um, the uh, uh, Denise is able to work live with a staff member over the phone to solve a problem. Um, and this also prevents, uh, you know, I wait, if I'm a bus driver and I wait three or four days before I put my time on my timesheet, they are now doing this daily. Uh, so so timesheets, uh, we have um, extra pay, uh, in the transportation department. Mr. Pope, uh, I'm going to pause you for just a second. Sure. So amongst this process, you and I had a brief conversation and we were talking about that, and it very ties well in with your book, but we were talking about the feeling of the uncomfortableness about something is new. And we were discussing about how bus drivers have now taken on this ownership of trying something new and becoming, and I know that Sarah Jane, you can discuss, you can just talk to this as well because we had our cafeteria managers who were doing things that they had never done before. So I want us to try to talk to our, to our viewers about the importance of not just doing, and Courtney, your ears are gonna perk up because I've heard you say this, and this is, in, this is also in, that, in your book that this is something that we've not, if we've always done it this way, why should we do it a different way? So I would love to and I hear wanted to, yeah. yeah, I wanted to chime in on that too. It's interesting because uh, I don't know if you all know this, but my mom is a bus driver for Hardin County Schools. So I am the, the proud daughter of a bus driver. Um, and I see her when she pulls her bus in, uh, coming in from work, she always has a clipboard and on this clipboard, there are tons of papers and I have no idea what she's filling out, but she always talks about the paperwork associated with being a bus driver. Um, and I think about her being asked to learn about Google tools and kind of how she would react to that. So I would, you know, that growth mindset and, and in your book, you speak about 
you know, pushing yourself to grow. And if you're not growing, if you're not uncomfortable, you're not growing. So, um, you know, onboarding classified staff with digital tools. I agree with Elaine. You know, how what was your strategy for that? That's that's a good question. I want to go back to that statement because um, especially in this office right now, as soon as I hear the statement, well, this is how we've always done it. Why do we need to change? That automatically tells me there needs to be change. We need to look at change. We need to look at doing things uh, differently. Um, so that's kind of an automatic for me. And so they know now in the office not to even make that statement. So, uh, um, but that was one of the things that I um, was so excited about with our training with our staff because they realized they could use their phone uh, to uh, fill out these forms. They wanted to use their iPads. They also saw the ease of this. Once we uh, eliminated the, the concern, they have all jumped in. And I, I, uh, Elaine and I, um, about this, we even had a, a gentleman who um, apparently had never used a mouse before uh, in his uh, late forties. Uh, so it was, uh, we, we had some obstacles, but we have made it way past that I'm wanting to look at ways that we can uh, equip them with other tools, uh, possibly like having their own iPad just for doing um, their pay. So I'll let I'll let Sarah speak to it now. Sarah Hedges, um, as far as integrating Google, I think our theme for food service this year was just pretty much growing as leaders. That's something that I really want to kind of fill a gap there between um, myself, managers and cafeteria workers and give them that ownership. And Google is really helping us do that because we're taking away stress and time for our managers and letting them have more time to build those relationships with their ladies and um, and, and really be leaders in their kitchens, which is huge because it just trickles down. And I'm seeing such a huge difference in the way they carry themselves and the way the kitchens are run. And I think Google is a huge part of that. So we're growing as leaders in food service. And, and in previous years, there's been so much concentration on the menu and um, the Healthy Hunger Free Act. And it, it, are your menus aligned or the calories right, the sodium right, or all of those things in line. And I think food service um, in schools was so, um, so immersed in that, that maybe some of it's, it's really kind of phasing into procurement and the bottom dollar and purchasing and things like that, organization, management skills. And so that's really what I feel McCracken is really working hard on this year. And Google falls in perfectly with that. So we're coming together and we're connecting ourselves not only with each other as managers and connecting as food service as a team, but we're also able to connect with other district um, groups so that we, my managers and myself and food service feels more of a support team with the district and we're able to communicate better and things like that. Um, the teamwork and the ownership that my managers are getting from this process is amazing because just like Mr. Pope said, they're stepping outside of the box and this is a new way of looking at things. And um, I am all about being in the front of the evolution of food service. I mean, it's way more than, than square pizza and corn. And I want to show the ladies that their job really matters and that we matter and that we're going to evolve into a major business in public schools, which is really what we are. We are a withstanding business. And so we want to act like that and we want our paperwork to reflect that as well. And I feel like Google has, has also allowed us to do that. Very interesting to, to tie exactly what you both are saying, which is that you are finding now that your drivers and that your cafeteria managers are becoming even better leaders. And by just by empowering themselves to do to get outside of that comfort zone and to do something different and have things different. So that is, that's very powerful to me. I agree. I agree. And, and it, it empowers them as they start gaining confidence and competence with the digital tools. They start working more efficiently, more effectively. It builds their self-confidence as leaders. Uh, totally agree. But I want to get back to what Mr. Pope was sharing. Mm -hmm. So I believe that we saw 
um, Google Sheets perhaps for timesheets for bus drivers. So do the bus drivers actually then go to the Google Classroom to access these sheets? Are they distributed to them through their Google Drives? Um, I want to I want to kind of dig into the workflow and I want to see the other pieces uh, the systems that you've created as well and how they are connected to that Google Classroom. I want to learn more about that. Me too. Um, I think you mentioned some forms and I didn't know if you had multiple forms or if it was just one form. So I'm, I'm with Heather to see what it looks like. Google Classroom, uh, there is an assignment each month for their timesheet. Uh, then they have access to all of the other things uh, automatically in Google Classroom. So they are using Google Classroom just like a teacher would with um, students. Um, so we, would that be in uh, the about section then where they can access those things like in the about section of the Google Classroom? That and um, in, there are things, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Elaine, but in streaming as well as in the about. The way they set it up was if anything needed to be done as an on an as needed basis, that about tab were things that that. So if you were and he'll get to this in a second, but he was but the leave affidavit, if I'm sick, I needed to fill out what we call at our district a green sheet that was in the about tab. And then if I needed to go ahead and fill out that extra pay, we had actually moved that to now. So there's some other things though, but I'm gonna let him share so that you have a visual too. With the timesheet, um, that is done um, daily. Of course, um, again, I'll go back and say that this is uh, to help them have accountability on their, their uh, monthly time and in the case that there is um, overtime, what you can't see in this screenshot that I added, uh, it also has their um, sick days, personal days, and those things accumulated at the bottom. Um, then there's also um, extra pay. Uh, in the transportation department, you have things like uh, preschool, routes, midday preschool routes, you have our 21st century routes, you have um, even monitoring on those routes, you have uh, the high school shuttle routes, all of those different things are extra pay um, for bus drivers and we have to have a way of, of keeping track of that. And again, um, Elaine and Denise Smith um, worked so that this document um, tallies everything, uh, gives them a total. Um, it's then accessible to uh, Denise, who is in charge of payroll here in our office through transportation. And then she uh, it, it eliminates all of that paperwork and um, a lot of the calculating that had to occur because um, having to go back and check. Uh, so there's uh, that loss of time and the amount of time that was spent on payroll. Denise was telling me that it took her previously like nine days to do payroll. And so now her goal, I told her, I said, I'm going to push your envelope. Her goal is to not take nine days to shuffle all this paper around and reorganize it and all that stuff. It's going to now be a two day process of payroll. And I know you can speak to this, but it immediately, once she's done, she shares the whole folder that all of the things go in to the payroll at the board office. So, um, so it's, it's, it's become a time saver for sure, for sure. But I'll let you keep talking. Um, that's where this all works so seamlessly because then Denise is able then to share with um, our, uh, our payroll office at the district and then our bus drivers uh, are paid. So then it, it reduces all of that time. I'm anxious for it to become uh, n not just uh, transportation, but go into all areas. Um, we also use it for um, leave affidavits. Um, so when someone is uh, absent, instead of having to come in and fill the card out, all of that, that is done through um, the Google form that was created. 
uh, Denise is able to keep track of that. Then she turns that into central office the same, same way. We started with our uh, request for buses for field trips. And um, that was uh, a, a big task for, for Elaine and, and Denise and Teresa. Teacher goes to the Google form. Of course, they need to get their principal's approval. Uh, but teacher goes to the Google form, fills out the Google form for a, a bus request. Uh, Denise receives it. Uh, she assigns it to a bus driver. It automatically goes to our Google uh, calendar for transportation. Uh, all staff have access uh, to that uh, Google calendar. So um, teacher can look see that their field trip has been posted. Bus driver can find it and know that I'm assigned to that field trip. Um, and then there are uh, forms that were created for receipts uh, of the field trips to keep that record of, yes, this bus driver uh, did drive this route for the field trip. And then to make this even better, the uh, teachers submit their roster through uh, Google Forms. And so there's not that paper um, that they have to um, keep track of also. So just to summarize, this is a hyper-connected workflow. What I've heard you say is, okay, we generate it here through this Google Classroom, but the sheets are then shared with uh, finance, who can then, in the in the situation of the extra le extra duty pay, they can then pay for extra duty. Then it's connected to the teachers as well to create a workflow in regards to field trips. So it's a hyper connected. Uh, workflow that you guys have created. So I just real quick, all of this is connected to a Google Classroom and we definitely want to hear from food services as well. On the Google Classroom, we have timesheets for bus drivers. We have leave affidavit, uh, Google form links. Um, I believe I saw extra pay Google Sheets, um, links for how to request field trips and tickets that go back to teachers after those, those requests have been filled. What else is on that Google Classroom before we switch over to food service? Um, I do weekly newsletters. Um, um, I use MailChimp, but now I post that uh, automatically to uh, Google Classroom. So that's, that's on the stream or the about page, uh, or, and I also put it um, for uh, extra or resources classroom resources. Uh, we have uh, used it for sign up for uh, different things. The American Fidelity uh, is a uh, insurance, of course, I think it's statewide, but American Fidelity, um, to, the bus drivers had to sign up for their times. Um, it's used as communication, uh, that front page uh, it's it's going to be endless of what we can use right. Google Classroom. So for. once again, like we often say, you've created a digital infrastructure for bus drivers utilizing a Google Classroom, and uh, you know it's a one-stop shop. That's when you know you think about why does all this matter? Because you've given them one place to go to meet all of their needs, and that's a that's a digital infrastructure. So well done. I believe I heard you say earlier, Mr. Pope, had you been a principal in this day and age, if you were a principal now, that you would definitely utilize a Google Classroom with your teachers. Uh, we had a little pre-show chat, uh, and you, you had mentioned that. So how do you, obviously you see the power of this, but through the principal lens, because our friend Chase Goff is, is watching live, uh, and he is a principal, through the principal lens, you know, why would this be so beneficial? I always wanted, as a, as a elementary principal, uh, and even did a little short stint as a middle school principal, but I always wanted uh, teachers to use their use their web page as the start of all lessons, that communication, all of those things that they could do. Now, when I see Google Classroom, that is the um, foundation and the format that I needed to have gotten that consistently 
uh, in my school. Um, we could have had better uh, communication with parents. Um, it, it definitely would have uh, been so much more consistent. Um, and, and I see it as endless, not just communication, but um, teachers could uh, use it for homework help. Um, just all of those things that Google Classroom provides. Um, if I were still a school principal, there is no doubt we would be a Google Classroom school. Um, it just it's just endless to me what we could could use. Um, as I said, I'm also a, a junk professor for Murray State, and I will be using it with my um, Murray State classroom in the fall. And uh, that's big. If I can I figure out, yes, yes, if I can figure out that the other day. My, my class, I'll do that also. <laughs> and I can help you that with that. So I wanted to also make sure that, also make sure that we talked about. Uh, all these things that they have put in place, we're going to make copies so that you can just create a copy of it and so that you can look at in the in the resources. But also, uh, I'm going to, and some of us here on the on the Kentucky Good Digital Live team are going to make some create sessions as well, so that you can make sure that you take a moment and say, okay, what was this part? I don't even know how to do that. And then, and, and all those will be connected in the resources part of the show so that you can feel like you have the power to recreate this and make it fit for your school district as well. So, but let's transition to Sarah Jane. She's my um, awesome food service who's we've been, I mean, it is so interesting to go from department to department and totally immerse myself in the fact of what, what is a DOD and what is, well, huh? you have to take inventory, obviously, but it's so interesting to learn these things, but they, they are able to see what they want and see the old way they've done it and see the, the time that they have spent faxing. Sarah Jane, you talked about this earlier, faxing things and uh, no more do you need to fax them. You see them live and you don't have to worry about, oh no, they highlighted in the fax, cut it off and I have to ask them to re-fax re it. So just let me, if, I'm going to let you take it away and share with them what you, just like Mr. Pope, what you guys have done to build um, this infrastructure and what and where you also, I want to make sure that you tell them where you see it in the future because you are continuing to grow just as Mr. as the transportation department is. Okay, um, I'm going to start talking food service language to everyone. So all of the, the foodies out there, you're going to know what I'm talking about. And if you don't, I'm going to do my best to kind of explain what these are here for and how we're integrating that into Google. So first, a list of the things that we are doing to those that are in food service right now. On Google, we now do our inventory. Just like Elaine said, that's very important for menu planning and just to see where we are budget wise as far as what we have on hand. Um, we're doing after school snack paperwork through Google, which is fantastic. That's a huge part of the claim that we said submit to the state. Um, lots of errors can be made there. So this has really eliminated that. We're ha we have our menus on Google. This allows for managers to make changes and then for them to submit them to me and I can make final changes and send a link out district wide. We have our sub lists on Google. Uh, we have manager meeting agendas on Google. We do carb counts with nurses on Google, which is huge, has really helped a lot with that missing piece as far as making sure that our diabetic students are taken care of and there's no confusion on what item number was used or what role was used, things like that. I think I heard her say she's using it, Google tools for manager menus, after school snack requests, the food service sub list, card counts for nurses, DOD ordering, which is what we're going to take a look at now. Uh, anything that I missed? Because this is a pretty awesome list. Um, inventory is a big one. Some things that we have upcoming right now is we're getting ready to, to start payroll, similar to what Mr. Pope was talking about. Um, field trip forms, we're going to be putting those out there so that teachers can fill those out. Um, transfer sheets for commodities. This will connect to the inventory so that if a manager wants to move um, so many cases of whatever to wherever, that sheet can then be also filled out online and eliminate that paper trail. Um, Google has also been used for co-op meetings. So this is not only within the district, but it's also from district to district. We can um, actually build our commodity trucks for KDA. 
um, prior to submitting to ensure that we get the amount of cases that we've actually ordered, which has been very, very helpful. Um, and just, just things that my managers are able to communicate as far as um, we have a Sunshine account where we all uh, pay money to to buy flowers if someone's family member passes away. We have that on um, Google so we can see where everyone is. We have a list of, of who is going to purchase meals if someone passes away, like who's going to get drinks, who's going to get um, food, whatever, if something happens. We've just really taken it and the managers have actually come up with so many wonderful ideas of how to use it. But this right here. Real yes. quick, isn't it interesting how you start to show them like, so I've taught you some tools and then mm -hmm. you've started taking things and I didn't even know you were doing the, oh, I can't remember what it was, but it was something else that I, you've started just growing. And it's, it's interesting. I feel like I've, I'm teaching you how to fish and then you ah. are just starting to do these awesome things. But then now your managers are growing and doing more and more. And it's just, it's always so interesting to me. But go yeah. ahead and show them this DOD and okay. you copy that from the, uh, from the website for the yes. Department of Defense. And then what do you do from there? All of the food service directors out here that may be looking, you're going to know what this is. But there is a list of items that you can get from the Department of De Defense. And you submit this on the website. Now, you still have to do that. However, prior to Google, each manager was having to submit to my secretary exactly what, how many of, how many cases of each item number they needed they were gonna have they were totaling it at the bottom so that we could take that from their weekly total because we take our DOD and we divide that amongst our schools and that is how much money they are allotted for the year so then they divide that out for for each week and that's how much money they can spend so the process was taking quite some time especially by the time you're emailing stuff and faxing stuff and it was just a huge mess for us to finally compile that DOD order so now we have uh, copied and pasted um, some of the some of the items from the website. We actually copied and pasted primarily the items that we use most often. So we very well could change this as as seasons change and things become more available, or we're using things um, more often that are in season. So we do change this as needed. And just like Elaine says, the prices do change and we do have to update that. However, the great thing about this is we submit it to our managers as an assignment. Um, and so we know that we're going to get everyone's DOD order at a certain time. We can see who has submitted it and who has not. Um, we can then go in and we can make changes if we need to. Um, and then that way, whenever we submit that order, all of our stuff is in one place and it's just eliminated time. It's made us more organized. We're, we're not trying to, oh gosh, okay, one school hasn't turned in their order, things like that. It's really also held the managers um, more accountable for putting in things in a timely manner because we know that we need to have this in by a certain time in order for us to get the delivery on a certain time. So um, this has been very helpful for DOD. Once again, efficiency for the win, right? At, yes, ma'am. Absolutely. How you're using the menus a different way. You've always, you had a vision of streamlining the menus in this district. And we have a large district. We have 12 schools. Tell them how it, how your plan of this and how you've incorporated using the, the uh, ability to collaborate on a live document. Go ahead. I don't want to give it up for you. Okay. So. so we know that we're all very regulated as far as what we can serve and we're not always the most loved people <laughs> because not everyone likes to eat fruits and vegetables and it, it it's really hit food service hard. So we want to make sure our kids eat. That's what we're in the business for. So we, we're we coming off of a review year. So everyone who is also in food service knows that the review year is very difficult because they will pick your menu apart. So we, we, we jumped that hurdle. And at the minute that, that, that review was closed, we decided we are going to completely streamline our menu so that everyone is doing the same thing and there's less time loosening the reins and pulling the reins right back in whenever we do have a review year. So we have we do have 12 schools, I say 10 kitchens. So with that said, all 10 kitchens, all kids eat, eat differently. So that was a huge hurdle for us to overcome to try and get all six elementary schools eating the same thing. Some of them like to eat more of those home cooked type meals where some like to eat, you know, chicken wings and fries. It, it just depends. So we've really had 
to take some time to collaborate with each other as far as the elementary managers, the middle school managers, and the high school, which is freestanding, but to really develop menus that not only makes everyone happy, but it's also prepping them for their next phase. So for example, whatever chicken nugget that they're eating and they like in elementary school should be the same one that they're going to be eating in high school. So there is no, we're, we've got the best one. That's the one we're using. And believe it or not, I mean, there are 12 different chicken nuggets on our list of things that we can order so that you can, you can go stray. So we really took our menus and we started meeting and, and Googling and we were developing menus that were all the same for elementary, all the middle for high for middle and all the middle for high all the same for high school, which a lot of districts already do this. We're just kind of trying we're on the back end of of developing. Tell them how you how that has started breaking down silos within your school. So we talked about how if one elementary school does it this specific way and then now they're collaborating, how have you seen that relationship between those managers change? Awesome, because they've had to really depend on each other and they've had to communicate with each other. And um, and I was very, I was like, hey guys, we're gonna work through this and it's not always gonna be pretty, but we are all gonna serve the same chicken nugget and we're all gonna do this the same way so that there's consistency because every kid deserves to eat exactly the best meal that we feel is required. So what we did, they, they first develop a menu between schools like all the elementary will work together all the middle will work together and then the high school i create an assignment um for them to submit that menu to me and when that menu comes to me then i check um plate cost i make sure components are being served i compare it to inventory to make sure that they're using their commodities but it really saves me time because instead of doing that to 10 menus i'm only doing it to three um another thing is this this menu will inevitably cycle. So it's going to save time there eventually as well. Um, it's also going to help from a co-op perspective because we're going to be, be more consistent on the number of cases of whatever that we're ordering. So that's also another form of stability there that we really, really want. We want to be consistent in the food and the products that we serve our kids and this will help that. So um, once I assign the menu and they fill it out, and submit it back to me, I make any corrections or last minute changes, and then I send the link out district wide so that everyone can see the district and it's, the menu, and it's great because it's on their phone. I mean, if they want to see it and they have a Google Drive, they can pull it up and just see the menu, and anyone can. Um, so that's been great. Can I just yeah. say that I love your energy? I mean, can I just yeah. take it's you awesome with too. me everywhere I go? I was going to say the same thing. So much passion for your work. Go ahead, Courtney. And so many times, especially on this show, I mean, we are, we are driven and we are all about, you know, instruction and systems of efficiency, but to listen to how much you care about what you serve these kids, because often these meals are the only meals that some kids get. No doubt. The fact yeah. that you all are working together to make sure that every kitchen in your district is giving the best that you, they possibly can or is, are allowed to, um, it just means a lot. And and we all know that instruction is not going to happen the way we want it if you are not doing your end. All those all of these behind the scenes programs that you are making be the most efficient really affects the child and how they perform in that classroom. So kudos to you. And oh, um, Chris yeah. Goff actually jumped on. Um, he's the principal at Caverna, Caverna High School and he was bragging on your all superintendent, Brian Harper, about how, you know, he is really leading the charge of systems of efficiency. And the fact that, um, you know, Mr. Pope and yourself, you are, you know, launching onto this, it, it just speaks volumes about how you all work together. And again, it impacts that whole student, that kid and how they perform and how they'll be. So awesome. It's, I'm like, I'm like Heather. Good job. Yes. yes. I appreciate it. I wanted to chime in too and, and point out the fact that Elaine, as the an ed tech leader in the district, oh, yeah. your willingness to partner with her, and she is an integral part of all of this uh, digital workflow development that's taking place in McCracken County. And so really, it's once again, a call to action in our districts. Yep. Leverage your digital leader, partner with them, help them figure out ways to work smarter, not harder. But anyways, and I also learned there's 12 different ch chicken nuggets to choose from. So I was actually just tweeting okay. about that. So I love your energy, purple cow through and through. Keep rocking it out. No doubt. So we do our menus and we talked about that. Um, 
I would say probably the two biggest things that we've really done is in a streamline the process is the after school snack assignment that we uh, submit because believe it or not, after school snack can really have some missing pieces whenever we go to fill our claim out, which it's all about the claim ladies. That's how you're getting paid. So we want that to be right. And that was just always not consistent. They weren't turning it in on time. So having that assignment sent out to our managers has really helped with that. So that's been a huge time saver as well. Um, the carb counts with the nurses has been wonderful. And the way that we're really doing that is um, we've given them access to our uh, food source provider website so that they have a username and password and they can put in any item number and pull up a complete label food label and see what that product exactly has. The missing piece that they were having difficulty with was on the menu. So we give them a menu and it has chicken nuggets, french fries. They don't know exactly which 12 chicken nugget that might be. So we have now put that on Google, shared it with the nurses, and it has the item number with that item. So the nurses can split screen it and they can have on one screen their menu that has the item number underneath it. And then they have on their other screen the CRS website so they can say, okay, chicken nuggets is five, seven, eight, nine, six. They type that in, it pulls up the label. They have the information they need to, to take care of their diabetic students. So that's been a great way for us to work together and eliminate a lot of confusion that we were having there. Um, as far as specifics, what, what can I um, answer as far as specifics on some of the lists that I gave? Because there's several things and we do each thing different. We do use um, Google Classroom, um, Google Sheets, obviously. We, we just do a lot of random things as far as just voting on, you know, narrowing down which Pop-Tarts we want to use. We do a lot of voting so that the managers do have a say. Um, that's, that's the one thing I do have to give a shout out here is, is I could not do my job without the fantastic people that I work with. And I love my ladies, love my ladies. I love the kids and I love to feed the kids, but I love my ladies and the managers. I really feel have probably the hardest job because they're not, they're in the, they're in the trenches. They're in between the kids and myself. And that's sometimes a hard place to be because I'm, I'm just, I'm winging it. I'm young and getting it. So I have lots of ideas and they are so great to be next to me and understanding and, and willing to to try these new things and we mess up <laughs> but we learn from it and i'm very much one that's always you know there's really there's not anything that we can't fix and food service lives on that motto anyway we run on a plan b so it's no different for us i'm going to ask you both mr pope and sarah jane um and miss hedges uh both what what do you think the impact is for your for the the time where do you think all this time saving piece where is this time going and I, I have the answer I know but I want you guys to say it so we've saved our bus drivers and our managerial staff in the in that department and then we're saving the managerial staff in your departments with the foods where is all this time going um. I hope it's going towards building their employees up so that they can find more organization within their spot within the school and make that more efficient. And that manager is able to leave their desk and to go out there and walk through the kitchen, look at the presentation of the food, um, spend more time building relationships there, building those links up. Because that no doubt is going to be um, integrated in the food that we serve. So building them up as leaders, more ownership, convenience. Sarah Jane, you're right, because I went into a, a school the other day and I had one of your managers and I wish I remembered her name. But she had said, Elaine, I'm not stuck behind my desk anymore. I don't have to be stuck there. I can even do it right here on my phone if I need to. And I'm out here greeting people when I wasn't normally able to do that. So you're correct. Your leadership has definitely impacted that. Mr. Pope, go ahead and, and you answer that your way because it's total. It is different. But where is this time that you are saving with these digital tools? Where is it trickling down? Well, well, first, within the office, it, it has uh, allowed three individuals to have more time to spend uh, on other tasks that are extremely important. So there, there, there's never a slow day uh, in the transportation department, especially since we're, we're trying to gear up for a, a possible bad weather event tonight. So they are no. they are able. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, yeah. they are. are they are um, able now to spend time on those other tasks, whether that's watching a video, um, uh, helping uh, a parent, those phone calls that come in. So that's one of the things. An area that we're not thinking about, especially with the um, uh, drivers and the monitors, would be that it's going to free them up time uh, that they were spending with that paper and pencil and that, that they're not taking away from their family. Uh, they're able to uh, uh, not be doing those time things when they're off the clock. And that's when they were having to do those, those type of tasks. Um, so those would be the first two things that I would see uh, where I've seen the most dramatic uh, I agree. I've even I agree. A hundred percent. And I think we've always talked about that with our principals as far as when the more that they in incorporate these and they work with these on in their schools, they get time back with their families. But also it trickles down to that bus driver who's able to not be as stressed with where are they going to go and, and what are they going to do? But then they're greeting their students even differently and able to talk to them differently, but then to the cafeteria managers being able to be outside of that, that front, that, that office that's back there and being able to be with the students and seeing and helping just what you said, Sarah Jane, help working and build up their staff and be those leaders that they truly are. That's, that's what, that's what drives me in this whole line of work is marrying two different things and making it become a, well-oiled machine and making it and helping it to become less working smarter, not harder as my grandmother was the one that always told me that. So, but yes, absolutely. Something else, Elaine, um, and I love all of that, but something that drives us and we just don't want it to be is that awful word of cost and everything that you all have talked about today is totally free. So when you have school districts that have programs that are costly or expensive, this is a free program um, and a free, you know, tool that everyone can use. So yeah, you're saving time, you're getting, you're giving time back to your people and then you're giving money back to your district. So it's, you are the dream team. You all have it going on in, in McCracken County. <laughs> I know, Heather, you've talked about this before too. And it's that that piece of, yes, it's going to be painful at the, a little bit at the beginning. It's going to be a little bit frustrating because you're getting outside of your comfort zone. You're having to learn. You're having to stretch yourself. But then that benefit, that cost benefit is is outweighs that little bit of struggle. And I know, Sarah Jane, you can talk to that for sure. And Mr. Pope, because it was not always easy. So, but go ahead, Heather. I know you had to say something. You well, to say I was something. just going to say uh Hello, uh, Marty Park just uh, walked up to say hello. Uh, so what I what I often say is short term pain, long term reward. So in the beginning, you know, onboarding that classified staff, going through the trainings, uh, building the comfort level of your team, uh, even creating the systems, reaching out to your district level ed tech leader and asking for that support. All of those things at first can feel a little bit uncomfortable. So short term pain, but long term reward. Now, after we've worked through and developed and really built the capacity of our team. Now look where you are. You're talking about more time back with your families. You're talking about um, better work-life balance and, and you're happier in your job because you get to do the fun stuff instead of all the paperwork that seems to bog a lot of people in the business down. So I remember Mr. Pope in our pre-show discussion, he was talking about how he used to have to fax those transportation uh, field trip requests on a fax machine. And so you think about all the time that that took him away from kids. So getting that time back. So short term pain, but long term reward. That's one of my favorite aspects of really leveraging these digital tools. And, and you can see it when we talk to Sarah Jane, her excitement uh, and how, how she's building capacity with her people who are also excited. It's just a force multiplier on so many levels. So I wanted to make sure that I re-say this and restate this. All of these things that they have taken the time to create and to tweak and that kind of things are all going to be packaged for you and so that you can make your own. That's what the power of Kentucky Go Digital is, is we're, we're creating 
and we're connecting and we're sharing. And so just because one school district has taken this time to work on something doesn't mean we're going to house it and keep it all to ourselves. It's free. So let's 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 multiply the, the power of that and then give it away. So all of these things are going to be in these in the in the resources in the bottom in the description of this and share it. Make sure you share it with others. And also, if you see something better, get on that hashtag. Let us know that you found another way to do it and let let Sarah Jane or Mr. Pope know him uh, know how how these things could be tweaked and to do even things a little bit more efficient. But I want to thank you guys both personally for coming on to the show and, and being so welcoming and so wonderful to work with. But Courtney, can you go ahead and let us know about, about make sure before I leave, is, is there anybody that had any questions or anything that we needed to touch base in the Twitter sphere or in the YouTube live chat? Just a lot of awesome quotes and ideas um, that people have tweeted out about you all. And like I said, Chase had joined in and was just really bragging on how well you all work together. You maximize a lane and and it's from leadership down. Uh, you all model this. Like you said, um, Sarah, if you're using it, then so are your managers and they're modeling that for, for their staff. Um, if, if you're watching and you are intrigued about some of these videos, there's a lot of things that a lot of things that they talked about classroom forms, uh, sheets, um, how to make an assignment. Don't get overwhelmed. Um, Elaine and some of the ladies on here and, and, and even people throughout the state, they are creating videos to support. So like Elaine said, don't get overwhelmed. Everything will be here to help you and um, reach out to your ed tech to help create these systems for you. And it's all free. Um, and if you're watching, go ahead and click subscribe. And if you um, want to go back and look at some of the other episodes, um, our YouTube channel, KentuckyGoDigital.com. This is um, a channel that is constantly being just for your use to learn more about how to create systems of efficiency in your school, in your department, in your district. So um, we're almost to 900 subscribers. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. And um, also Facebook, Brooke created Brooke Whitlow. She is spelling being champion. She actually joined in on our chat too. So I don't know how she's managing it all. That's Brooke, if you know Brooke. Um, she created a Facebook page. So pop over to that Facebook page and follow us there as well. And Heather, we've got all kinds of events coming up if you want to share those. That's right. This summer, uh, we just launched our Kentucky Go Digital Summer Tour. And you can find out more information about that on Twitter on our hashtag Kentucky Go Digital. Again, I wanted to thank everybody for joining us today. And we will see you back here on the 15th of February for Digital Tools for Kindergarten Readiness. That's live at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time with Anna Shepard. She's the Early Childhood Director from Floyd County Schools. And don't forget that as you create, connect, and share your good ideas to the hashtag so that others around them share them so that others around the state can benefit it as well. Kentucky Go Digital. Have a great day. Bye, guys. Get involved with Kentucky Go Digital. Attend regional events. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or follow us on Twitter.